What's up, Buckles? In this video, I will tell you how I landed my first machine learning engineer job in four months after I graduated as a biology student. I will walk you through the steps I took, the resources I used, as well as the mental shift I experienced at each stage of this process. At the end of this video, I hope I can convince you it is not what you expected and it is worth it. I organized the lessons I learned and recommended the materials into a Notion page. I will share it with you at the end of this video. Before we get started, please note this video has timestamp for each section. If you are in a hurry, you can jump to that part directly. Okay, let's get started. Steve Jobs has many impressive quotes. One is, you can't connect dots looking forward. You can only connect them when looking backward. When I look back at the journey I took, it's far from a straight line. I spent four years majoring in pharmacology as an undergraduate. Then another eight years in graduate school for biology. 12 years later, in the summer of 2020, I found myself walking into my PhD advisor's office to announce that I'm going to quit whatever I was doing. My first exposure to programming beyond answering Quit's question about basic as an undergraduate happened in 2018 at Denver Ethereum Hackathon. I didn't know a thing about blockchain, but some of my friends developed an application using blockchain, so we went there for the competition. Surprisingly, we ended up winning a thousand dollars bounty for each of us in Ethereum, of course. At the time, I earned less than $2,000 for a whole month working as a research assistant. And the programming did seem much more fun than centrifuging bacterial cells at 2 a.m. in the morning. I was immediately hooked. After returning to school, I wanted to learn and use programming so badly. So I transferred myself from a white lab research group, which is a type of research group where you design the experiment and collect the data firsthand. So I used to do all sorts of work from taking care of the animal, culturing the cells, and to purifying protein and RNA. So I transferred myself from a white lab research group to a computational research group. I also went through the course catalog at my university and took all the courses I can register. To make my learning more hands-on, I started pitching to my advisor why we need to develop our own program and why we need to use machine learning for our protein structure research. Before I realized it, I somehow became the go-to person in my department for anything related to machine learning. In 2019, my first opportunity came. A big academic figure joined the national lab where my advisor also worked at. One day, this big figure suddenly showed up in my office and asked me what is KL divergence out of nowhere. I remember I was more than happy to answer that question because no one around me seemed interested in that topic and I finally got someone to show off my studies. Later that week, he offered me a summer internship. That was the first internship in my whole life. I was apparently overexcited. For the first time, I was paid to do what I wanted to do. Then, within two weeks, I realized I was wrong. I was still happy about the machine learning part, but everything else went wrong. In that national lab, no one else used Python. They also never used AWS or GCP. That's not the worst part. Both I and this big figure have very strong personality, and I couldn't handle his arrogance. He had a PhD in math, and he got excited by asking me very random math questions that I don't see how it's related to my work, and most importantly, I don't know the answer. When that happened, he would immediately start lecturing me in front of all my colleagues. Very soon, I was filled with stress and hatred. Every morning when my then boyfriend, now husband, dropped me at that national lab, I would invariably ask him, please be the first one to pick me up. Just like how I told my grandpa when he dropped me at kindergarten. From that experience, I stopped enjoying machine learning and even intellectual challenges in general because I started associating intelligence with arrogance. After losing interest, and forcing myself to work on my research 
for several months, I finally gathered my courage to quit my PhD. When I told my advisor about my decision, he immediately counter-offered to let me graduate faster. He was a great advisor to me, and he offered what he could. But in my mind, that missed the point. So I insisted on graduating as a master's instead. After that decision, I felt so afraid and at peace. I knew that was the first decision I ever made purely by myself and for myself. Years later, it turned out that was one of the best decisions I ever made. I graduated in August 2020. Now the game started. What do I do now? Yes, I have several degrees, but none of them are helpful for the type of job I want. I had very few close friends, and all of them were in biology. My own family has never been an option for me. Luckily, I had my boyfriend, but still, I couldn't manage my mental health. In September 2020, a program called Insight accepted me. Insight is a place where they train STEM majors for coding-related jobs. I spent several months there practicing pair programming and mock interview. Finally, after three months in that program, not only did I land my first machine learning engineer job, but I also made my first several friends outside my PhD circle, and I have kept in touch with them ever since. That's my journey from being a biology student to landing my first job as a machine learning engineer. I will add more technical detail later, but overall, this is really an emotional ride. From the very beginning, randomly attending a hackathon in Ethereum to trying to somehow using machine learning in my graduate research to landing my very first summer internship, every step was scary because I don't know anyone that took the same journey as I was doing. I had insecurity and imposter syndrome all over me. I couldn't figure out how to explain to people why it took me 12 years to quit my PhD so that they wouldn't think I was just a failure and I totally wasted my past 12 years. I remember one day at Insight during a mock interview, my advisor, who was also my practicing interviewer, he recognized my insecurity. So he asked me this question. He said, Moon, is it possible that other people think positive of you when you told them you quit your PhD? After several seconds, I realized, yes, it was possible. I left my PhD, but I made that decision and I own it. Because of that, I now can understand and support people better than I could. It was that shift in perspective that changed the entire game of job seeking for me. It's not just what I already had, it's what I can see out of what I have. Finally, we got to the resources I used and the lessons I learned. Here are all the materials I used, but don't worry, they may look overwhelming initially, but you will learn faster and uh, adapt to your own learning patterns over the time. The first lesson I want you to be prepared for is called the Law of Triviality or Backshedding. The first time I heard this concept from program, he called it Yak Shaving. The idea is that when you want to get one thing done, when you actually get started, you will realize there is a seemingly endless series of small tasks that must be completed before you can move to the next step in the things you actually want to do. For example, in machine learning, you may want to look up the difference between three, four similar concepts, how they are different in their context. And when you actually start looking at them, you'll just accumulate 20 more new concepts that you have to dig into before you can understand the jargon you're initially looking at. At the end of the day, you may not even remember where you started from. This can be frustrating if you didn't expect this phase to happen. When you're a beginner, you usually don't have your system set up to reduce small frictions like that. All these small frictions, they will add up to your mental burden to the level you want to discontinue the whole thing. You may expect it will always be this difficult, which is not true 
It's just in the beginning. Another lesson I learned is sporadic deep diving is more effective than systematic completion. Basically, you should be driven by the end goal, which is usually a concrete question you want to ask, not the means, which is the material you happen to have at hand. In the beginning, I was obsessed with completing materials end to end, so I could earn a certificate or just feel that I indeed finished something. But then I realized it's just busy work to procrastinate more important things because I don't retain the information very well anyway if I don't have an immediate need for it. So rather than focusing on this structure given by the material, I developed this lazy loading plus deep diving pattern for learning. It's like working with a database. If you design a way to retrieve information effectively, you don't have to scan the whole table each time you want to get your question answered. The learning process is about connecting, not collecting. The third lesson I want to share is to scope your confidence. After preparing for a job interview for a while, I crafted my go-to prep list to avoid being overwhelmed or stressed. This prep list became the mode of my interview confidence. If I was asked a question during an interview outside this list, I will just admit it. A lot of time, it's okay, I still got the offer. After the interview, I will look it up and add it to my list. This way, every failed interview became the feel for the following ones. As a junior, you are not expected to be impressively knowledgeable, but you are expected to show your eagerness to learn and your capacity to take in failure and feedback well. The last lesson I want to share is to take your time and be patient with yourself. When preparing for my first job, I constantly oscillated between being overly excited and then overwhelmed three hours later. In contrast, I noticed a different experience at a buffet. At a buffet, I also get excited, but I never got overwhelmed by the food I need to finish. Because in buffet, I know my purpose is to enjoy what I can, not to finish all the food. Even though I decided to make a profit by practicing machine learning, skills, that doesn't mean I should rush my deliveries and force my learning speed at the cost of losing that inner joy of learning. I've shared a lot of lessons when looking for my first job. I also want to include some extra ones that I learned later in my career. Growth mostly starts with pain. So I must learn how to handle negative emotions like shame, frustration, anxiety, and stress. Second, things are always harder in the beginning because I don't even know where the standards are. Playing a game without knowing the rule is understandably frustrating. Whenever I embark on a new area, which is almost every day, I find it helpful to remind myself of the four stages of competence. If you don't have a strong evidence from the past and you don't have enough clarity about the future, you may find it particularly challenging to believe in yourself, which is a big distraction and waste of time. You must figure out a way to stay focused and consistently improve yourself. Effective communication and solid technical understanding are two separate skill sets. You cannot use one to make up the other. Some positions are suitable as a job, but not great as a career. Watch out for a well-paid job that leads to a stagnant career. All employments are transactional, but relationships aren't. Don't feel indebted to the job, but stay connected with the people around you. Finally, we get this finished. If I need to go through the whole process again, I would be thrilled. Because pivoting into a new career with 10 times pay is a real achievement. It's a milestone. It changes your perspective and it changes your lifestyle. Thank you for sticking with me for my very first long video. I want to know which part of my sharing is actually helpful for you. If you like this kind of content, please give me a thumb up. If not, please give me a thumb down. I just want to know what you want to learn. Also, I would like to know what you would share for becoming a machine learning engineer without a CS degree. See you next time.